Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. How are you doing today? We have a wonderful message to talk about. And firstly, because we are today in November 8th, in the morning I was journaling and I've noticed, oh, it's 8. And 8 to me is uh, such an interesting number. According to numerology, it has two infinities. One is that um, from one aspect we can go into infinite thinking that can lead us into infinite misery. But on the other side, it can lead us into an infinite connection with the vastness of this universe or consciousness and we become infinitely connected, in tuned, unified, right? So number eight is in numerology, this number that balancing that is balancing matter and spirit, or better said, spirit and mind, because everything is mental. So I wanted to make this message as an important reminder that it's over whatever you've been dealing with. It's over whatever you've been going through. It's over how you've been approaching life because you are being ready for something new. You're being ready to experience it in a new way. You're waking up, you're evolving, you're progressing and demonstrating what you want to see in your life more and more. Not that you're a master of it or perfect in it, but you're working on it. And as you're working on it, you deserve the best for yourself. But because we are so often defined by the memories of the past, we don't naturally think like, I deserve the best, like, I deserve the greatest possible joy and my intention for this day is to experience it in the highest form of joy. So firstly, I want to remind you of this. And before we start, I will read what I wrote today for our Instagram community. To anyone who would like to get these daily messages, go and check out our Instagram community, Attract Passion channel on Instagram, where you can follow me, write me a message, or just be a part of the community. Check it out. And also don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to this channel, because it helps to bring these messages to more people. And for that, I'm really grateful to you. It's a part of this service. So thank you so much, my friend. Today's message goes like this. You find inner peace when you release attachments to positive experiences and stop avoiding challenging ones. Both are merely experiences meant to be lived through, not to define or limit you in any way. Learn to accept what has happened and be intentional about your path moving forward while flowing in the momentum of joy from doing what you love regardless of the outcome. The greatest miracles find you when you stop chasing them, right? You know this ancient proverb who says, stop chasing butterflies, but rather take care of your inner garden and butterflies will come. I love this poetic language because it makes us more mystical, as we are mystical, we forgot about it. But we need to remind ourselves of this playfulness of life. You know, when you go outside and you observe animals are playing around, the only time they stop playing is when they are hungry, right? When they need to take care to feed their bellies, and as soon as they, they do that, they rest and then they start playing once again. So we come to the point of our human being evolution where we've overcame this state of survival. And we are entering into a state of playfulness. We are becoming more playful. We are actually embodying more of the potential of consciousness. And consciousness is infinite playfulness. And playfulness is a system that is designed by this creative force. So we start using creative force for meaningful playfulness that starts connecting one another, right? And starts making meaningful uh, outcomes, whatever we do. We can only do it once we overcome this need, this limited need for survival, and we recognize that we are much more than that. So I want to start this video as a saying that it's over. 
It's over the way you used to live your life because you're ready for so much more. There was so much in this um, message that I've read to you and it's an introduction for today's flow. So you find inner peace when you release attachments to positive experiences and you stop avoiding challenging ones. Let's start here because I know in the past when I was introduced to this kind of knowing it was so hard for me to be understood because I wanted to change my life. I wanted to be more prosperous, to live a life of abundance. So I say to myself, how can I lose the attachment to positive experiences? If I don't think about them, I will never come to there, right? But it's not about uh, not thinking about it. It's not about not having goals. You have to have something to aim towards because otherwise you will be controlled by your past programming, right? You will be doing what was the most uh, natural to you in the past. So we have to have something to aim towards, but you don't need to be attached to it. That is a timeless wisdom that is reminding us to have a great vision for your life because you deserve it and because you've been through conditioning that taught you that you should be poor and broke and and stupid and and uh, without any great uh, life because it's not for you. You're not worthy of it and you should work really, really hard just to survive. And whatever we've been heard, whatever we've heard about how life works, it's time to let go of it. It's over for this old mindset, old way of thinking. It's a program of the past. And the future brings to us a refreshment of a way we think about life, right? And we need to refresh ourselves by recognizing, well, I have, I want to have this vivid vision for a life I want to live. I want to have such an incredible vision that when I will wake up, I will be so charged with the energy that will push me into a creative process. I want to be so charged with it because I want to make it happen. That's what started happening to me when around the year 2018, I've started really precisely writing about how I want to live my life, what I have, everything, what kind of car I have, what kind of people surround me, what am I doing, everything. I wrote down everything, but then I wasn't waiting it to happen. What I started doing, I actually started working on what I had the most fun at. I started painting and I've started painting a lot. Actually, I was painting all day long. I was doing one painting a day and it helped me to really make a progress in my painting skills, in the ability of self-expression. And because I was filming all of those paintings, I have a lot of material now. So it was like a part of me would know where I'm going with this because in the future, everything I was working back at that time will be really helpful for many people. But back at that time, I had no idea that it is leading me to here. I had no idea how I will get to where I am today. But everything I wrote down back at that time happened. So I was not attached to when things need to happen or how things need to happen, but rather to have the most joy getting there. And because I was really enjoying at painting and creating art, I was not thinking like when I will get my first clients and how everything will turn out. I was rather more perceptive to opportunities that are finding me. And this is truly incredible. I've stopped avoiding challenging experiences because challenging is often something that is good for us. Challenging is often something that is good for us. So we have to say, okay, it's over for me avoiding challenging experiences because what if in the greatest challenges I will meet the greatest people? What if in the greatest challenges I will actually meet a potential client? So back at that time, I had no clients. 
and I've opened my company because I thought, well, successful people have their own businesses, right? So I've opened my own company with an intention that um, this will allow me to sell my artwork and to help people all around the world. I want to bring messages together through art. So I did it without knowing how things will turn out. And after I've opened a company, I, I've shared this with you, but it's so beautiful how everything started aligning as I've embraced this uh, challenging unknown scenarios. You know, when we stop avoiding these fearful thoughts, like, oh, what will happen? How this can turn out into something great? Well, try it out and you will see. And when nothing works, be with those feelings, be with those fears, don't avoid them because the only suffering happens once we start avoiding our fears. If you actually sit down and feel your fears, you will notice they don't have much to say. They're just painful on the surface, but as you dive deeper into it, a release of energy happens. It happens through your body and it just feels like this stored energy that was stuck somewhere in your stomach or somewhere in your muscles will be released through your spine into your brain and in your brain you will experience like an orgasm of incredible energy. It's like a tiny kundalini awakening happening within your body every time you release a deep fear. That's why it's so important to stop avoiding these fearful thoughts and any scenarios. It, those are all illusions until you make them real with your mind. The first hermetic principle says the world is mental. Everything is mental. So your mind creates things. Your mind may th make things real. And then you make up stories out of what you think that is happening and the stories define you. And as you are defined by the stories of what you think that is real, suddenly this becomes your reality. And that's why if we want to change our reality, we firstly need to become aware of the story we are telling to ourselves. And the story is er everything and anything you believe to be true. It's all a story. You may say, yeah, I've seen that. I've experienced that. Yeah, sure. But same experience can be defined in infinite different ways, right? So you've experienced it based by your knowledge, based by what you think to be true. So I just want to remind you to fill yourself, fill yourself much more. So when you have that great vision for the future, you will not be pressed back into a certain limited box because of your fears. When I did that in the past, I, through synchronicities, I met a great mentor that introduced me to some really incredible people that lead me to my first clients, that lead me to being even more inspired for my work, that lead me to creating this YouTube channel, that lead me to incredible and intense growth as I've started making content daily, that lead me to more and more incredible people and more growth and also more financial success and so on and so on. So it starts with the challenging experiences that we have and embracing them, acknowledging them and recognizing that they are not so scary as they may seem. All of these experiences are just experiences meant to be lived through, not to define or limit you in any way. That is something truly important to know because I know many people are saying, well, I'm surrounded with narcissists and toxic people. And when you recognize, okay, those are the people I don't want to have around, you recognize, well, what can I do? If you really, you know, embrace a challenging idea, you will notice, well, well I want to move myself to a new place. But to move yourself to a new place, there will be new challenges, like maybe something related to finances, or like not knowing where to, to go, or you feel a need to go to travel and you're afraid to go to travel, or maybe you may find yourself like being alone and you're not really confident about that. But those are the challenges that, that needs to be embraced. And those are the parts of life people are avoiding, but those who embrace them, they actually experience greatest possible miracles.
that usually follow greatest possible breakdowns, right? Most often, a breakthrough requires a breakdown, a breakdown of old way of thinking, a breakdown of old beliefs, a breakdown of old emotional limitations. That's why we need to feel that and we need to talk through it. If possible, find someone to talk about what you think that is limiting you because usually through talking, through conversation, we recognize that actually we are our own limitation. That's why I'm journaling every single day. I'm writing down what I think that is real. I'm writing down how I feel. I'm writing down my philosophy. So my philosophy is constantly evolving, changing, breaking down, falling apart. And through this falling apart, a new understanding is emerging. It's, that's why it's constantly evolving. And therefore, I am constantly evolving and learning. I'm constantly challenging myself in different ways. Just to remind myself of how much I'm still limited by my old programming. So I'm constantly saying to myself, okay, it's over. It's over for this type of living. It's over for this... Um, not well organized uh, way of eating or diet or whatever because let's see what happens if i create a greater order here or if i actually free myself here or if i actually do what i was so afraid of or whatever let's see what happens if i say okay it's over and i will start this new process and when we learn to accept what has happened and be intentional about our path moving forward while flowing in the momentum of joy from doing what we love regardless of the outcome incredible things start happening we tap into the unknown an unknown in the old way of thinking was something scary something that may attack us something that may destroy us but in the new way of thinking and living from a deeper state of consciousness, unknown is the most exciting thing. It's the most exciting because we are stepping into infinite potentials. That's why in meditation, when you shut off your five senses, and at some point you become so calm, so relaxed, that it starts to feel like you're not being yourself anymore. You're not being your identity anymore. Now you're being a part of this infinite quietness, infinite darkness. In, and in that infinite darkness, everything is possible in that moment. Whatever you think about, you feel it immediately. If you feel it long enough, it will charge your whole body like it's already present. You become aware of infinite potentials. And then if you can live in that new energy, you will notice that interesting things start happening in your life. You really become a, a vessel of this uh, vastness, of this creative field that just wants to create. It just wants to create. And if we walk in greater energy that may be associated with deeper connection, uh, higher joy that usually leads to this sense of love for what we do. If we walk in this sensation of love, sensation of joy, sensation of gratitude for being alive, what's happening, whatever we create becomes meaningful, isn't it? Have you heard any song that was really made out of this, out of joy from an artist? You feel it. It moves you. It moves you. There's a spirit within that music, right? Or an artwork. You see a painting that was made out of joy and love and passion from an artist. You feel it. That's why you feel a deep need to maybe to support that artist or, you know, whatever you find yourself being attracted to. You notice when a certain creation was made by this higher energy, it has really, really incredible qualities to it. You look at it or you listen to it or you observe it and you feel that same energy. That's how we are healing this world, by walking in joy, talking in joy, being more passionate about life, 
about living, about healing. I want to heal because I'm curious what happens when I tap into a deeper health of my body. I want to recognize how differently I will move myself. What will happen? So I became passionate about healing, right? I want to see what happens if I become just a little bit more creative with my work. I want to see what happens. And suddenly we started reaching so much more people. Just when you become more creative, you recognize that there truly is no limitations. And the only limitations are those who are limiting our creative capacities. And those are beliefs and stored emotions. And to release stored emotions, we need to feel them. Most people are avoiding them. And therefore, they're projecting their pain onto others because they're avoiding it. So rather than dealing with it, they just project it onto others. That's the old lifestyle. That's what we are saying. It's over. If I feel unpleasant sensations within my body, I want to feel them more. I want to know them. This is most probably the pain of my ancestors. If they had no understanding and knowledge and time, most probably, to feel it, I want to feel it for them. And that's how they can be experienced through you. Celebrating you for doing the work they had no opportunities to do. So you're healing your family DNA and releasing your karma. Because karma is what? Karma is a flow of habits. It can be good one or bad one. Or let's say constructive or destructive. Karma is a flow of patterns that was developed by the past and is maintained in the present so it can exist in the future. But right now we are deciding, okay, do we want to make an end of a stream that is destructive so we can give a life to more constructive one and therefore create a new karma which is based in living joyfully. But what happens, more we are living joyfully, more we are living in the moment, more we are present with what we are doing. As I said, the greatest miracles find you when you stop chasing them. You fall in such a strong or intense love with what you are doing, that time stop existing for you. You recognize, well, I'm not doing it for making some results, I'm doing it because I just want to do it. And when we become so present with our lives, even karma disappears because we notice all we have truly is this moment. And what I'm doing is I'm being a kid once again. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. And that's when we say, oh, it's over for my old self. It doesn't exist anymore because I was just being reborn. So learn to accept what has happened. Be intentional about your path moving forward while flowing in the momentum of joy from doing what you love. And anything can spark love for you once you stop judging things. Whatever you do can be experienced through love. Even you may say, oh, I hate my job. Well, try to do it with love. And you will notice that um, even your approach to job will change. Sure, change your job if you don't like it. At least start thinking in this kind of direction. But as long as you're here, there, <laughs> don't hate it. Do it, with, <laughs> do it with the capacity that you have for, for doing your best there. Making your best there. Not because, you know, you may say, oh, it's injustice, uh, my boss is not respecting me or whatever. You do it for you. Do it for you. Love that job for yourself because you don't want to feel hate for whatever. You don't want to feel sad for whatever. You, you don't want to, you know, be miserable just because you are there. Do it with love, but know that um, in the future you will end up some, somewhere else because you deserve more. Sure, if you don't have capacity for that, deal with your sadness and feel it and, and talk about it, write about it and resolve it. 
But don't stay in that infinite sadness. That's the number eight, right? You can go infinitely into healing and joy and love and curiosity and awe and so on. Or you can go infinitely into overthinking and judging and complaining and misery and so on and so on. So number eight is truly this interesting symbol that uh, just gives life to whatever we are feeling. So make sure you're wise about that, right? (laughs) My friends, I hope you found something valuable today. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. Thanks to all of you for supporting my art in our Etsy store. I draw my passion. We are running a unique sale 20 off on all of my art. So go there, check it out. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you so much for your support. Until next time, one love.